What's up, YouTube? My name is John Hammond. Welcome back to some more Pico CTF 2018. This is a video write-up on some of the cryptography warm-up challenges and just a few others that follow. So this first one, Crypto Warm-Up 1, 75 points. It says, Creepy Toe, <laughs> or uh, a typo on crypto, that's funny, can often be done by hand. Here's a message you got from a friend, seemingly gibberish, with the key of, this is a little key. Can you use this table to solve it? So let's go ahead and uh, just download this. And I'm actually going to do this in... I'm going to use curl for this. Let's make a directory for it. Creepy toe. <laughs> Crypto. Warm up. One. And I'm going to use curl to download this because it's nothing huge. It's just this bit of information. So this is the table that it suggests us to look at, right? And... This essentially is trying to put together or, or illustrate um, the encryption and decryption of another message or a plain text, a plain text message with a specific key. So letter by letter, you would look at one of the letters that, okay, let's say is in the original uh, plain text message. I'm sorry, I'm blocking my mind trying to think about this and you would use that as a row or a column and then you would use the other first letter or the corresponding letter position in the key and you'd use that as the other maybe your column or row and then because of this transition on the table because it shifted uh the alphabet is shifted kind of letter by letter in this case as you kind of move either across one row or down one row as, as you can see um that is what is going to end up giving you the letter of your <clears throat> excuse me the letter of your cipher text so the letter inside the grid here or inside the table is what you would expect to see as your cipher text so in our case we're given something a little bit interesting we're given this ll blah 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 with this is a little key as the key here so i'm just going to paste this so we know what it is and this is a little key and i'm going to try and il illustrate this or explain this and how we would go ahead and decrypt it by hand but i'm not going to have us decrypt it by hand because that's stupid and dumb we're smarter than that and we know that we can automate these things so let's say we had the letter l and that's our our cipher text right and we know that it is in the middle of the grid because it's our ciphertext. But we also know it's going to be in the T column of something, right? Because the key in the corresponding side is a th what we're using as one edge or the, the boundary and barrier of this, this table here. So let's find L in, let's say, a T column here. So I'm going to move down until I find L. There it is. And if I move all the way from that L to determine what it would be on the plain text side or what we've deemed to be the plain text side, we would see S. So we know that S is going to be the first letter of our plain text. Let's do the same thing for L, but now this H as what we're using from our key. So H, let's say the column here, look for again L. So I'm sorry. We see that the following letter should be E. So C, S, E. So whatever that could mean following, we could go through that procedure until we got it. However, I want to kind of enlighten you and teach you a little bit more about what we're actually looking at here. So this whole block, this whole, this whole diagram, this whole table that we see is the alphabet shifted over and over again in a peculiar way, right? It's just one character by character. So the real name of this is something that is associated with Vigneer. And I'm saying that wrong. I don't know the correct pronunciation. But the Vigneer, Vigneer, whatever, that cipher is a form of a polyalphabetic substitution cipher. And it uses a table, or the Vigneer table, which is the Vigneer square, which is exactly what we're looking at. That's that text, table.txt file that we just downloaded. So this is a Vigneer cipher. We can actually, if we wanted to, do something online. Let's just get like a Vigneer cipher decoder. And just take a link here. That's perfectly fine. Let's say, okay, cool. It already knows what we're doing here because I tested this earlier. We have the ciphertext that we can paste in. We know the key, so we can paste that in. And then we can run decrypt veneer. And it says secret message. That is the full decryption or the full original plain text given the ciphertext and key that we know. So I actually have another video on writing this or doing this in Python. And I think it's part of the TJCTF video series. And I do this often, right? I the veneer cipher is a kind of a common thing in capture the flag competition. So you can totally find it. Um, I certainly have videos on it, but right now we know that our flag 
is pico ctf secret message and I could write something to do a get flag script with, with running this, um, but I'm not going to track down that code. Actually, I, screw it. I'll track down that code. Let's see if I still have it. I may not because I tried to clean my hard drive. Veneer square, veneer cipher. Looks like I have it, or a copy of it. Oh, these, I have it in my original Pico CTF folder. So let's try that. Subble veneer cipher. Pull it up. And I have insert the message that I'm using, or really the, the ciphertext that I want to see. So I'm going to run decrypt on it. Encrypt it. This is the little key. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the lowercase letters of the alphabet, and I don't know if I need digits in there. I can probably remove that, but I guess it's doing it just fine. And I loop through the key if it's not the same size. I iterate it and cycle it if it's not the same size, because you will have to repeat the key until it's the length of the message that you originally see, if your key is less than that. But since our key is 13 characters and our message is 13 characters, it's totally fine in this case. Uh, I remove punctuation, because that's kind of a, the habit and the standard that you would do in Vigneur Cipher. And, and then I try to take the position that I see, or the cipher letter and the key letter that I'm finding, finding their original index, and shifting or rotating the alphabet, just as you would see on that veneer square, or the veneer table, and then determining what the new character is based off of the index of the cipher. So I'm essentially automating what we did when we visually looked at it, and I put it all together. And decrypt, I just go the other way on that table. So I can run this, and we see secret message. So I'll save this as getFlag.py, and I will print out Pico CTF with the format specifier, formatting decrypt in there, and that is our getFlag script. So mark that as executable, and we've already got that flag saved, so we're good. Let's mark that crypto warm-up challenge as complete, and I should probably copy the flag. <laughs> Go ahead and submit it. Oh, it's not running because I changed the directory name. Stupid me. Submit. 75 points. Oh, oh, it probably doesn't even need it. I think it's just... Oh. Let's check out what these hints say. Submit your answer in our competition's flag format. For example, if your answer was... Oh, please use all caps for the message. Odd? Let's, uh, let's change that up in our script. Let's actually do that for our get flag script in here. Replace it, redirect it to flag.txt, xclip it, and submit that. There we go. That's much better. Sorry about that. Okay. Properly spelt crypto. <laughs> Cryptography doesn't have to be complicated. Have you heard of something called ROT13? So if you don't know this, again, you can Google it. ROT13. It is a simple letter substitution that is essentially a Caesar cipher, right? If you haven't heard of a Caesar cipher, it is that shift of the alphabet or just moving the letters. ROT13 is moving the alphabet kind of in half, right? Because 26 letters, 13 of them. So you just move them over to the other side of the alphabet. You can read more a little bit about the page, but it's a common, common thing. Again, you have online tools if you want to work with them. You can paste them in and get the flag just like that. Pico CTF, this is crypto. If you want to do it from the command line and automate everything just like I do, you can go ahead and do that. Let's get the original prompt here. Make a directory for it. I'll mark it as complete again. Crypto warm up two. Nano. Let's do get flag.sh. Bin bash echo this, and pipe it to ROT13. So ROT13 is installed from BSD games, so sudo apt install BSD games, and you get uh, Caesar, which allow you to actually control the shift, but ROT13 will only shift by 13 characters. So that's kind of a, a an interesting thing, a peculiar thing, and a good tool to have in your command line toolkit. Already solved it. All right, let's check out grep1, because this is another simple, simple challenge. You can find the flag in this file. We don't need it on the shell server. Let's just go ahead and download it. And we have used grep before in a previous video, so hopefully it won't be too hard to pick up or grab, just because I've, I've tried to showcase it a little bit before. Make directory grep, and let's mark it as complete, <laughs> just because we're confident and we know we're going to get it. Let's uh, download this. 
and let's grep for Pico CTF. Let's do everything. Let's just get the flag format that we want out of the file, and just like that, easy. Let's get color equals none in there. You may have to do the the same thing because your ending hash or the hexadecimal stuff that's added at the end of your flag will be specific to your account, so don't use my flag. Paste that in. Kind of simple in this case, but knowing the flag format is what is important in this case. And grep to just quickly hunt and search for stuff is important. Because if we were to actually check out the file, there's a lot of nonsense in here, right? And it's probably all on one line. So we would just regularly grep. We could just grep for, oh, let's look for Pico CTF uh, in the file. And, oh, I guess you'll find it anyway. It is on its own line. Peculiar, cool, but good to know. If you want to... Yeah, it's on its own line. Wow. If you want to determine only what you are returning just to use that tack lowercase o and you'll get only which is which is a good hint so let's submit that um all right netcat using netcat will be a necess whoa sorry <laughs> will be a necessity throughout Throughout your adventure, I gotta stop this video. I'm, I'm gonna lose my tongue. Can you connect to this at this port to get the flag? I've covered Netcat a lot, and it's super important in a lot of like CTF challenges and, and capture the flag competitions. So let's go ahead and make a directory for this challenge. Simply Netcat. I probably could have marked that as complete, but Netcat to a specific host. If you don't know what Netcat is, it is a program that will allow you to connect to a remote host on a service, on a specific port. So some software or some script or some code that's running on that service or kind of controlling that socket is what you are connecting to and what you're going to interact with. So you Netcat to a specific host at a specific port, and as you are connected, it says, hey, that wasn't so hard and it gives us the flag. So super simple challenge. I'm going to use tail tack n, so I get the very last line, and that is going to be our get flag script. Shebang line as usual. Pump our line in there. Mark it as executable. Flag.text. Xclip it. And we can paste that in. So, cool. Hopefully that one is another simple and easy uh, wanted to showcase a little bit of the cryptography stuff and showcase simple grep and netcat. So we're moving through Pico and hopefully we'll get into some of the more fun and hardcore interesting stuff later on. But certainly the first couple of levels are a little trivial and very, very beginner friendly for people that uh, have seen this kind of stuff before.